Hello guys, I'm Futurial. I stream five days a week over on twitch.tv slash Futurial. And in today's video, we are taking a look at the 2.4 PTR servers from Diablo 2 Resurrected. In this video, it's the Assassin, and it's important to highlight that we're not testing the entire Assassin. We're testing the changes. So if you want to see what is, you know, historically the strongest build for the Assassin, there's going to be a link in the video description with the best of the best series, Assassin Edition, which is the strongest build for the Assassin. However, in this video, we are going to test the changes. So we're going to look at Blades in, we're going to look at the Wake of Fire in, and we are going to look at the traditional Martial Arts Assassin. So the changes is the emphasis of this video. If you enjoy the video, hit me up with a like and a subscribe and leave a comment down below for what you want to see in the next video. Until then, take care and I will see you soon. All right, guys, we are here with the Assassin. Uh, we have uh, prepared all the builds that we were talking about in the introduction and uh, it's very important to, to understand the purpose of the video and the purpose of the video is not to show you guys what's the strongest Assassin build. Uh, the point of the video is to highlight the new builds and to show you how they work, you know, I, I I can't play all these builds to a extremely high level. That would be an impossibility since one, many of these builds are completely completely new. Um, so we are going to take a look at these three builds for mentioned, and we are going to start with the Wake of Fire Assassin. It's a build that I have played on Project Diablo 2, for you who are familiar with that. Um, to great success, I played it in Season 2, I leveled it to level 99. And we are going to take a look at how the Wake of Fire Assassin functions in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So the gear is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, we have Infinity, Andes, and Fortitude. Don't mind the bases. They are not correct. They are just uh, something I slapped on because I had it. Uh, the character is using pretty standard traps in gear. You have the Call to Arms, the Spirit for buffing. Heart of the Oak. Spirit, we're using a 2 Assassin, 8 FCR. Amulet, this has to be 7 or more to reach the uh, 102 FCR breakpoint. Champ Shaco, in, uh, Enigma. We have a Chance Guards over here. So this is where an area that you can... Uh, you can deviate on the on the glove sl slot here, because this is just Magic Find. If you don't have rocks, you can use Mage Fist and, you know, stuff like that. It would also give you plus one skill to fire skills. Um, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have uh, the Amulet, you could potentially go with an FCR ring. There's, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. And, you know, we have some tri rest uh, boots over here. If you don't have boots this good, you can go with tri rest gloves, double rest gloves, but whatever you might have. Um, I, I kept the, the inventory quite simple. Um, so you, sk you can clearly see that you can get more resistances here if that's what you're after. Torch Annie. And we have seven skillers and uh, one Geeds. Uh, the build is as follows. We have no points in martial arts. In traps, we have maxed the, th the three uh, fire traps and their synergies. Uh, we maxed death sentry and the dependency, the synergy, lightning sentry. So this is 102 points. That should give you... Um, that should be maxed. What would 102 be? And then 12. Should be, this should be maxed at level 90. And then over on shadow disciplines... You don't have to take one point in Mind Blast. I just prefer doing it because of the stun. Um, and I also prefer to have one point in Fade for like curse reduction and stuff like that if you do get amplified. But the most important is that you have a couple of points in Burst of Speed. So when you level this character, I would put one point in Burst of Speed. Then I would go for the traps. I would uh, level the Lightning Sentry last. So take all the four other ones. Lightning Sentry last. If you want Mind Blast, take one point. If you want Fade, take one point, and then you level Lightning Sentry as your last synergy. And you could, you know, after that, if you do have a ridiculous level like I do, uh, you can put the ex access point in Burst of Speed. So I'm going to show you guys three areas which I think uh, this character is going to be very, very strong. Uh, historically, I don't think this is going to be a boss killer. So something like Chaos Sanctuary, also thinking that they are hard fire immunes in Chaos, is probably not going to be great. So we're going to skip Chaos. I did a short test on um, on Travancle. Um, it was not great for Travancle either. Uh, so you should probably stay away from Travancle on this character. 
So we're going to start with cows. We're going to go for Stony Tombs, which is one of the new level 85 areas in Act 2. You might recognize it from Project Diablo 2. And we're also going to try um, the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Icy... Uh, Ice Tombs? What, what, what's the name of this uh, last dungeon, guys? Icy Cellars. The Icy Cellars. Not to be confused with Drifter Cavern. Drifter Cavern has hard fire immunes and is not going to be great for this character, but the Icy Cellar is also an area level 85, and I'm going to be showing you that area too. So first of all, let's open the cow level, and uh, let's see what this character can do there. All right. So as you can see, this is a really fun character to play in the cow level. So herd together a lot of these. Put down the traps. Change them with death sentry as stuff starts dying. And just enjoy the mayhem. So as soon as something starts dying, you can just put down the, um, the death sentry. Now, we are on players 1 right now, uh, Bloodnet, because we are emulating people playing on Battle.net. Uh, we could potentially turn up the player count uh, a little bit later. But it's not really relevant for the vast majority of people. They are going to be playing this on, uh, on Bnet on players 1. But yeah, as you can see, uh, this build is absolutely murdering cows. So just for uh, for science, we can uh, we can go over here and we can turn on uh, players three. I think a lot of people they try to um, uh, to play in three man groups where they join up with two friends or maybe they have a dummy account so that they have a little bit better um, slash players in their games. So let's try players three in uh, the cow level and see what we can do. So we need to go a bit further away here, so we're sure that these are spawned on players 3, about here, I would say. So as you can see, it does take a little bit longer to kill the first target. But once you kill the first target, it's a uh, good night, Sally. So this, this build is uh, absolutely amazing for the cow level, as you can see. Uh, much by the, uh, the strength of the death sentry, of course. But yeah, very, very cool build in this area. Um, and I definitely recommend the cow level if you are playing the Wake of Fire Assassin. But it's, it's, just, uh, it's just mayhem right now, to be honest. We actually have a, we have a really, really, really strong candidate for most fun build to play in the Secret Cow level. This is absolutely amazing. I feel like the, um, the, new, the new graphics, the updated graphics on Wake of Fire is, uh, is really, really amazing as well. So yeah. Definitely recommend this build in the cow level. Now, let's take a look at Stony Tombs. Okay, so we are in the Stony Tombs, or we are just outside the Stony Tombs. So this is one of the new areas that you might recognize from uh, Project Diablo 2. This has been made into a 85 area in, uh, in Diablo 2 Resurrected as well. And we're going to check out how this character fares down here. So we do a couple of uh, Wake of Fires, a couple of Death Sentries. And then we, uh, we cast our uh, Fire Blast. Mana Burn is always uh, an, an enemy of any caster build. Hey Abaddon, how's it going? So, as you can see, this build is uh, working just fine down here as well. Just using two Wake of Fires, more Death Sentries. Bigger explosions. 
Um. So the only thing you need is is the first the first target dead, right? When you have the first target dead, that sentry will take over. And you see how that goes. It's it's a very very strong area farming build. So that's the stony tombs. I don't even know how fast we did that. It felt uh, felt pretty pretty quick there. I have to say. That's uh, pretty much ownage right there. I can't carry um, so I, I feel like um, Stony Tombs, Cows, both solid areas to play the Assassin in, the, the Wake of Fire Assassin. Um, also gonna give a shout out to uh, Ancient Tunnels. We tested it uh, outside of this video and it was, it was just fine. I just didn't want to show you guys too, too many areas to make the video too long. And um, you could test out those areas if you want. All right, we have arrived at the Icy Cellar. Uh, this is in Ancient's Way, as you can see in the upper right uh, corner. Must not be confused with the Drifter Cavern that is in the Glacial Trail. The Glacial Trail, uh, in the Drifter Cavern, you have hard fire immunes. And uh, as far as I'm aware, you're not going to have hard fire immunes in the Icy Cellar. Um, this Act 5 area is a little bit tougher than the other areas. You can have some souls and some stuff down here. So... Um, um, just be aware that this area could be a bit tougher than the other two, but if you do like a challenge, I think this Wake of Fire Assassin is going to do really well down here. So let's jump down and uh, give it a quick buff. And here we go. Let's see what we have. Yeah, you see here, we have dolls. The, the good thing with this build is that uh, you do have a, a really good range, of course, because of the, uh, the melee mercenary and your traps being able to be cast from really far away. So you just have to be careful that you don't blow up a whole bunch of dolls right next to where you're standing. So you just put down a couple of Wake of Fires, a couple of Death Sentries, and then uh, you swap out the Wake of Fires with Death Sentry when uh, you start getting, uh, getting kills. That is gonna make everything really, really nice. Uh, do I need Infinity for this build? Um, you you could potentially get away with not having Infinity on uh, on players one, uh, but I would definitely recommend farming uh, uh, cow level until you can afford uh, Infinity. So we can we can go on without Infinity here. I did lose my mercenary, so just for uh, for the sake of it, let's complete the uh, the map without Infinity. And as you can see, it's it's well doable. Uh, without infinity as well but it's much harder of course you, you can you can see that the, these units they take um, they take longer to die but it's it's doable we have a snap chip over here first death give me some uh, some death sentries there we go So is this build playable without Infinity? Yes, it is. Is it going to be uh, significantly worse? Yes. I think uh, if I were to play this build um, at a budget, well, quote-unquote budget, I would probably uh, pick up Infinity first and go for uh, Enigma later on. But this is mercenary less right now. We actually we lost him down south on the map. Um, so absolutely doable without infinity um, i wouldn't recommend it without infinity make sure that you farm the cow level until you can uh, afford getting your infinity but um that is, is that is that for the wake of fire assassin very very cool build one of my favorite builds in the game i'm very happy that it's been made stronger uh, i i'm definitely going to be playing this build uh, at some point in the future so i hope you will enjoy this build as well check it out can be played in many different ways so a lot of stuff you can juggle around here. You can use Claws, you can use uh, Mage Fist, skip this amulet, skip a rocks if you don't have it. There's a lot of things that you can do. Oh yeah, before we, um, before we end the video, uh, I was asked to do 
a Mephisto rum uh, using Wake of Inferno. So let's... Um, Wake of Inferno is the single target uh, spell. So let's... Uh, uh, let's find a reasonable button for that one. Uh, there. Yeah. And uh, let's go kill Mephisto real fast and see how that goes. This is going to be with Wake of Inferno. I do, however, think that uh, uh, this is a little bit unfair. Uh, it's, it's a little bit unfair to Mephisto, to be honest. Because... Uh, you guys have to remember, Mephisto is probably an area that you want to farm, like, super early on, right? And my gear is not for super early on right now. Um, actually, I think I'm going to do a, a quick one here. And remove the infinity. And see how this build fares against Mephisto in a, a kind of simulated uh, early game. So let's go. Okay. Actually not too bad, if I have to say so myself. That is not too bad, honestly. And you can you can mold trick Mephisto with this trap. You just drag him down here. You can jump over. And uh, you can use the traps over here, the Wake of Inferno traps over here. That was um that was better damage than I thought on the boss. Happy with that too. So that's going to be it for the uh, Wake of Fire Assassin or for the Fire Traps in. We're going to change some gear and we're going to move into the next build. Oh, I I respect. Okay, so let's set up the build here, guys. Uh, you're going to you're going to have to help me with um, with uh, how we how we play this. Uh, let me see. Do we go Venom? We don't go Claw Mastery, that's for sure. I guess we have to have uh, we have to have one in burst of speed, right? Or was was this the build that we were gonna we were gonna play fade? Oh yeah, we were gonna play fade because of the fade on uh, on the weapon. So we should probably have one point in fade, yeah. And then do you do you go venom? Probably not gonna take mind blast. Uh, do we supply with uh, with death sentry for area farming? Uh, teleport. Hmm. Okay. So. Um, You max venom. Okay, so let's let's try out that build. With uh, with max venom. Okay, so we have maxed venom. Uh, we don't we don't do um, dragonflight, right? It's kind of dangerous to use uh, dragonflight. I would say. Cobra strike, tiger strike, phoenix strike. Um So where do we, where do we put the points in this build guys? You you want to have one in warrior? Okay. All right. We can do that. It's a lot of points though. It's four points. What's the synergy of this thing? Hang on. Blade Sentinel, Blade Shield. Aha, uh -huh, so it's here. Do, do you do you supply with Death Sentry to this build? Or, or do you just use um, uh, Blade Fury? You can try one. Okay, but let's let's put in the um, the points. So those are the points. No, so now we have Shadow Warrior, uh, Maxed Venom. We have these, and we have we have twenty points remaining. 
Is there anything better to take than just having Death Sentry for the extra... ...like, um, area farming capabilities? It's gonna be a quite, um, a quite complicated build to play, though. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of binds. But I'm not sure where to put the extra points here if we go more in Death Sentry or more in Fire Blast. What is the, what is the increase here? The increase is about 9 out of 100, so it's about 9%. Oh, actually, you're right. The increase in damage from putting points in Lightning Sentry would be better than putting points in Death Sentry. And putting points in Fire Blast gives me extra shots. So what if I put... It's a little, uh, it's a little weird, that one. But I'm, I'm assuming this um, fire one shot per three levels is only hard points, right? It, that can't co possibly be uh, counting soft points. So, what if we put nine points in here? To have three extra shots, and then we just dump in Death Sentry to have bigger radius? Yeah, let's let's try that. Okay, let's go for that. Now we want the the uh, the or uh, the um, the radius on Death Sentry to be a bit better, but you I mean you can juggle this around, of course. You don't have to do. You don't have to do it like this. All right. It's time to test a build called Blade Fury. It's a build I have never played before. Um, I'm, I've taken a lot of advice from my chat here. I'm gonna try my best to uh, to showcase how this build is supposed to work, um, as particularly from the from the new player perspective. Now on this one, so uh, the first thing I wanna wanna highlight is that we are playing a Holy Freeze mercenary. Um, if you don't have Last Wish, so if you're playing anything but Last Wish, you can see Last Wish gives you level 17 Might Aura. If you, for instance, are playing a Storm Lash, which is a, is a good alternative, there are a few other decent alternatives. Death, maybe, might be a good alternative. Uh, so if you don't have Last Wish, go with a Might Aura Mercenary here. If you do have Last Wish, you can pop on a Holy Freeze Mercenary for the extra safety. Um, the setup is the uh, physical damage setup that we have been playing on multiple characters before. It's the Ethereal Reaper's Toll with attack speed ED. It's the Kiras with attack speed. And it is the Treachery. This gives you exactly 75 attack speed with the 45 from Treachery. And 75 is the breakpoint for a Thresher to have maximize the level Decrepify proc. Um, the, the Crepify is going to be super important to break physical immunes, and it's going to increase your damage by a gazillion. On swap, we have Call to Arms and Spirit, of course. Uh, we are playing Last Wish and Phoenix, High Lords, Crown of Ages, Fortitude. We have some 220 gloves here. Alternatively, Laying of Hands might be really good. Uh, we are going to test them both if we see that this is lackluster. We have a really nice rare... Attack rating, Mana Leech with double res ring. String of Ears. Raven Frost for the cannot be frozen. And we have the Gores for Deadly Strike, Open Wounds and Crushing Blow. Inventory is uh, one Geats, Max Damage and Life Charms across the board. One with FHR I had. And we have some Life and uh, Max Small Charms as well with Torch and Annihilus. So it's a pretty pretty standard setup. I think the, the item that most people would miss out on is the Last Wish. Um, if you play, like I said, uh, Stormlash, Death, just swap the Mercenary to a Might Mercenary and you are fine. So, uh, I also want to make a note, we do have a Demon Limb for Enchant. Um, it's important to cast that for the extra attack rating when you are, uh, when you are going. So, let's open up the Cow level. Let's pick up our Demon Limb and let's jump in here and start buffing up. 
It takes a minute to buff up this character. So, Battle Command, Battle Orders, right? Okay, Fade. You want to pre-proc Fade. Venom. And you change here. To this thing. Enchant. You cast Enchant. Back to Call to Arms. And then Blade Shield. And then you swap weapons to your last wish. You do that for the plus skills on Call to Arms and uh, Spirit. You buff on that side and then you swap back to this. So we're gonna try both um, Blade Sentinel and um, Bl um, Blade Fury, uh, Fury as your main spell and we have Death Sentry to fill. So let's see how this goes right here. So we put down a couple of Death Sentries and then we attack. So the, the important part here is to get the first kill, right? When, when you get the first kill, the um, the death sentry will take over for the damage. So obviously this is not uh, this is not going to be super quick. So the area farming capabilities of this character is not amazing, um, but it does work. It does work. Uh, it's. Uh, Last Wish Faceblade uh, ideal for this? Um, I actually don't know. I actually don't know. I feel like if you want to do something else, um, you would want to... Uh, oh, you would have to, like, completely revamp your entire gear because of the, the crushing blow that you would be losing from Last Wish. So if you go for, for example, a Ath Lacerator to get Amplified Damage instead of having the Mercenary with, uh, um, with Decrep, uh, you could do that, but then that would be completely different gear. And it's probably viable. The thing is, if this is the sub-optimal way of playing it, which it, might, it could be, I am absolutely no expert in this build by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I mean, you can see that it's working. This is not... Uh, this is not super fast, of course. But it's working. I, I probably wouldn't... Um, I probably wouldn't recommend farming cows on this, uh, on this character. Simply because uh, the movement speed is gonna... Um, it's, it's gonna really hamper you, right? Because you're you're running everywhere. So I would probably not play this build if you are playing uh, like area farming. Like if area farming is your thing, I would probably not play this build. Um, I think we have seen enough from the cow level, uh, simply because it's uh, it's many many different sources of damage. And uh, Travancore is historically a uh, fantastic place to farm when it comes to uh, to high runes. It, it is, in fact, the best area in the game for high runes. Okay, so we do have a uh, physical immune over here. Uh, so that gets wrecked as soon as uh, the decrep procs. Some traps, a slap. This works absolutely fine. It was actually quite strong in uh, in trap. Uh, not not trap. In oh yeah, in trap. Very very strong in trap. Good area for this character, I would say. Diablo walks the earth. Okay, as you can see, guys, we have just uh, spawned uh, Diablo clone. Uh, I'm already buffed up up front. We're just gonna go Blade Fury, Death Sentry, and we're gonna see how this goes. He should be right up here. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Why is my mercenary standing still looking stupid? Oh lord. And this, keep in mind guys, this was without... Um, this was without um, having decrep. 
Look at that damage. So when I said that this is a single target damage build, yes, it is. <laughs> this is a single target damage build. Absolutely destroyed D clone, and it's gonna do the same thing to Ubers. Absolutely. Crappy Annihilus there. But yeah. Um, if you are looking for a build that can deal with D clone and Ubers, and it's not one of the traditional builds, like Smiter kicks in uh, Fury Barb, a uh, Frenzy Barb, I mean, or Fury Druid, uh, Blades in is a uh, really, really good option. And it, as it's been mentioned here in the chat a couple of times, of course, uh, this might not be the best gear setup. This is just something that we threw together in uh, like half an hour. We built a couple of characters. So you could you could go different uh, different setup here. Um, for instance, a setup that has been suggested is going with a Ethereal Lacerator because uh, Blade Fury doesn't use uh, durability. So you would go Lacerator and then G phase for the uh, for the deadly strike that you're uh, you're missing for last wish and then you go pride on a might mercenary with uh, fortitude and um, probably and this visage so there are, there are many ways you can build this character at the moment we don't really know what is the best setup this is something that we have to like iron out in the first couple of weeks of the of the ladder season but will this character work as a concept for single target dps absolutely you can farm Trav as well, which is an amazing area to farm in the game. Um, you can probably, in the early game, with Death Sentry support, like I have been playing, you can also farm uh, Pindleskin, Thresh, um, uh, what's it called, Shank, Eldritch, all those usual, usual suspects for early game farming. Uh, obviously, this would be great for Mephisto farming. The biggest problem with that is the travel time. With dynamic maps, you don't see where he is. You have to run on your feet. You have no teleport. So I would stick to farming areas that are very close to waypoints, like Trav, like Pindle, like Shank Eldritch, and uh, also very, very strong for D-Clone and Ubers. Um, you can also, if you were not aware, you can farm Nilathak with this build very, very easily because the Death Sentry will eat up the corpses around Nilathak. Um, there, you can also predetermine where Nilathak is. It's very like already here. I know how to get to Nilathak the fastest. If you want to learn how to farm Nilathak, I will put a link in the description to my Nilathak farming video where you can recognize what map you are on immediately and go directly to Nilathak without having to look for the portals. That's a very, very useful skill to have when you're farming Nilathak on Battle.net. Uh, but that's going to be it for the Blade Sin. Um, I'm very surprised with this build, actually. It was a little bit worse than I thought for area farming. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it was quite bad for area farming. And the, the fact that I have so low mobility with uh, having to play Fade was also quite disappointing. Very slow character. However for single target DPS or farming areas that are close to waypoints, for instance, Travancore, this character is uh, is really, really strong. So if you uh, if you want to do like Uber's Declone, those kinds of areas, farming Trav for your rune words, I can absolutely recommend the Blade Sin. So we're going to re uh, respec, put on some other gear, and we're going to be on the Martial Arts Assassin uh, in just a few minutes. All right, so we're here with the uh, Martial Arts Assassin. We are specifically going to go Phoenix Strike. Um, and uh, let me just quickly explain a little bit how that's going to work. So Phoenix Strike is majority uh, elemental damage. And that's why we're going with the Infinity uh, Mercenary. Infinity and, uh, and Holy Freeze. You can, you can put Might on this Mercenary if you want to, but uh, physical damage boosters will not affect this character too much. So um, I choose to go with uh, with Holy Freeze. Don't worry about the basis. It's just something that I threw together. Uh, also important to mes uh, mention at the start of this uh, character that I have never played this build before. Uh, we don't know which gear setup is uh, the best. So that means that this is what I'm playing. 
Call to Arms Spirit, we have a Chammed Shaco, we have Bartux and Jade Talon for all rest and Mana Steel. Running Amaras, we have Enigma, we have 220 Martial Art Gloves with some stats. Uh, Mana Leech, Attack Rating, uh, Ring, Arax, 1 SOJ, tri rest Boots, we have 1 Geeds, we have some Martial Arts Skillers with the various stats, we have some Resistance Charms, and we have an Annihilus and a Torch. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, so this build is as follows. We are using Phoenix Strike as our charge up skill. And then we have put one point in every single of the um, of the finishing moves. So when you build this character, uh, I would suggest that you max your Phoenix Strike. You put one point in Burst of Speed and in uh, Weapon Block. Uh, so that you reach the 56% uh, chance to block. Then you put point in what whichever finishing move that you want to play. I'm going to test all of them, so that's why I have a point in all of them. Just pick the one that you want to do. And then you just max the synergies and you max Fist of Fire last. Um, oh, there were actually... Actually, don't max Fist of Fire last. Max Close of Thunder last. So you would have it... Because Fist of Fire is uh, like a double buff. You get also both damage and uh, duration from that one. So I think uh, Claws of Thunder is probably um, the one you should uh, max last. So that being said, let's open the cow level first and let's try it. Well, the thing is, as I said before, I'm very, very inexperienced with this with this character. So if you want someone to play this character right, that's not me. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to show you uh, the best I can do here. And um, we will see if this character is, uh, is useful for somebody who is uh, fairly new at this, uh, this character. Okay, let's uh, jump into the cow level and uh, see what we can do. And burst of speed. And then we have the Phoenix Strike. The teleport is uh, obviously... Uh, not amazing here. And neither is this... Uh the, the charge up damage seems uh, pretty low, if I am to be uh, honest. It is it's very very cool build though. Okay, so we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to uh, take a little bit better look at the rotation. But as you can see, uh, it's definitely working. It's definitely working. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, I'm completely new at this build. Never played it before. Um, we are slaughtering cows. It's the highest health units in the game. So I'm fairly convinced that if you invest some time to learn how to play this character, you get some reasonable gear. This is going to perform quite well, actually. It's not going to be the fastest, of course, uh, for obvious reasons. It's a physical, or not physical, it's a melee type style build. Um, but I can see it just from, uh, from the little bit of testing that we have done now. Uh, let me see if I can find a larger pack here. Uh, yeah, we have a really big pack down here. So I can see it just from the little bit of testing that we have done here, that this this damage is just fine. There is, there's nothing wrong with this damage at all. Uh, and I think that the biggest problem here is actually that I'm very inexperienced at this build. I can't play it properly. Um, because I have never practiced it before. But I think that, uh, I, as I mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago, this build is going to perform really well if you do learn how to play it properly. You get the right uh, rotation on your spells. And uh, maybe even you choose some different weapons than what I have. I, I doubt that I have the, the optimal setup for this character. But this definitely works. I have no... Um, I have no problems accepting that this Phoenix Strike Assassin is absolutely gonna work. So 
That's a pretty big uh, pull down here. I mean, we're, we're just slaying here. Like, seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised. This build to me seems really, really cool. I mean, I, I com fully understand that this is not going to be the fastest and most efficient build in the game, but it actually works. You can play it. You can absolutely play this. And you can have a ton of fun with this build. Is it the best option? Nope. Definitely not. But this is, uh, for somebody who likes to play the... Uh, the Phoenix Assassin, you might have played it on like uh, on like uh, Project Diablo 2, Path of Diablo, similar mods. Let's pull a really big pack here. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely slays this. Uh, yeah, let's try, uh, let's try single target. Um, how do we do that? What's the best way of testing single target? Chaos? Yeah, but I mean, I feel like chaos is... Um, uh, chaos is kind of... Um, it's kind of weird because chaos is bugged at the moment. Um... Conversion, okay. Um, but okay, I think that's that's it for the cows now guys uh, remember that the cow level is The highest health single monsters for area farming in the game if your character does well here Which I do think that this character Based on the fact that the character is a melee character, and I think that this also has a pretty high skill ceiling um, You need to invest time in learning how to play this character the skill rotation is important so that you can maximize your DPS um, you can absolutely have a really, really strong character if you want to play this type of assassin. Now, let's move on to the next area. Uh. Alright, we're in Trav. Uh, I, th I think that this build is going to do fairly, uh, fairly well in Trav. So let's, uh, let's just try it. We have some conviction going on here. Uh, I think, at least I think there was con conviction there that it wasn't mine. But as you can see, um, this build just absolutely murders Travancore. The high uh, elemental DPS uh, from all schools of magic is just going to slay these. They don't really have that much health. The reason why these guys are kind of tough on the majority of builds is because they have high immunities. But this, this character does cold, lightning, fire, and physical damage. So this is just gonna murder Travinkle, and you s that didn't take that didn't take long at all. That was just a few seconds on on each pack. So this is absolutely a great character to farm Trav with, which is the best rune farming area in the entire game. Um, absolutely great. I don't feel like I need to say anything else. That's uh, in the early game. Uh, th it it might be very very dependent on Infinity, um, but you can try it without Infinity and see how you like it. You could potentially even have like a lower res wand uh, before you can afford call to arms. Just cast lower res on them and just murder them. Uh, because I'm 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 quite surprised on how well it did in uh, in Travancore. Um. So let's um, let's just do far teleporting and cross our fingers to not get uh, stuck. I want to just do this uh, a really quick run. Yeah, so this so this works just fine in chaos as well. Oh, that thing is outside the map. That's not good. Well, I guess we should just kill it. But that's uh... yeah, we're playing uh, Bartux and Jade Talon right now. Champions. Champions getting kind of wrecked. 
Let's go. It's going to be inter interesting to see what happens on the uh, the Sace wave. Okay, nothing happens. They have too little health. Ooh, the Holy Freeze was really clutched there, actually. Holy Freeze uh, really clutch on, uh, on in Chaos. I think maybe uh, Holy Freeze might be uh, might be the play for this uh, for this character. It just allows you so much more safety when you're in in melee range, right? And there we have it. Okay, we just slapped uh, Infector. I will say the the Chaos run was quite smooth. Uh, the Holy Freeze Mercenary really worked well. So uh, let's uh, let's just do a quick rebuff here, and we're gonna get over to Diablo and see how the damage will be on single target. I do kind of expect the damage to be uh, on the lower echelon because I think the attack rating will actually matter quite a bit on this guy, and he is. Uh, he is level 94. So let's just go and see how it goes. Oh. I lied. That was quite a nice surprise, to be honest. That guy got slapped. That guy got absolutely slapped. Uh, that is true. I, I have to mention that to everybody that's uh, watching the video. I am level 98. So this this character has uh, a really, really high level. That will help the attack rating quite a bit. Uh, but again, this might not be the optimal setup for this character when it comes to the gear. So even when you're around level you know, 85 or whatever, you might still be able to do reasonable DPS to this boss uh, if you uh, choose a, a better gear setup than the one that I'm running. But I think uh, that's going to be it for the assassin changes. Um, I'm actually quite surprised by the assassin. Uh, if we take a quick uh, look back to the characters we have tested, we started out with the sorceress. I was not impressed by the Norva sorceress. It was still struggling quite heavily with, uh, with mana expenditure. Uh, Hydra sorceress was obviously um, also kind of like the same thing. It's, it's too clunky to play, but it's really good for Mephisto farming. So if you want to farm Mephisto, you can do that with, uh, with Hydras in the early game. Uh, for the Paladin, um, Fist of Heavens was really cool. Very, very cool build. Um, it fits best, of course, in areas where we have undeads. So Chaos Sanctuary Paladin was super strong. Uh, also really good in Ancient Tunnels. But I think, even though that... Oh, and we also did the, the Fire... Um, the fire aura. I wasn't impressed with the fire aura. I think the damage is really, really stupid. It is the, the damage is stupid high, uh, but the lack of mobility will still make that character um, more of a meme, particularly because the the build is so expensive to make, and the fact that you don't really do anything. You just run around in a circle, and um, yeah, it's a very, very uh, passive and. Uh, not very interesting gameplay. Although, very, very high damage, of course. Very, very strong, but uh, I think it's going to become a meme based on the price and based on the fact that you don't have any mobility. I don't think the efficiency of that build will be uh, particularly high. But that being said, this is the third character we're testing, and until now, I like the changes for the Assassin the most. I have to say, I do. We made the Wake of Fire Assassin work. It was f quite strong. It has multiple areas it does well in. Uh, being cows. Um, it does well in um, Icy Cellars. And it does well in Stony Tombs. It's also going to do pretty good in Ancient Tunnels. Many of the new Area Level 85s, probably Arachnid's Lair. Um, the Blades in was slow for, for group farming. It was absolutely insane for single target. It murdered B-clone in just a matter of seconds. And that was also with suboptimal gear, basically just something that we threw together. And now, at last, we did the Phoenix Strike Assassin, 
pretty much echoing the two other builds. Very, very fun build. Um, and I think even the single target damage here really, really impressed me. Um, I think I want to say, though, one thing uh, at the end of the Assassin video here. The Assassin, to me, as a very experienced player of this game, I can tell you straight up, Assassin will probably be the most rewarding character you can play. Because it is quite skill intensive. You need to invest a lot of time in playing the Assassin. It's a very, very complicated character to play properly. There's a lot of skills that you have to use right. And when you become good at that, you're going to get an even stronger character. So check out the Assassin. A lot of cool changes. Absolutely recommend this for intermediate to advanced players. If you are new, make sure that you do research how to play this character properly. And you're going to have a great time on the Assassin. So thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Until next time, take care, and I will see you guys soon.